There you Welcome go. to What's Up Wednesdays with Leah and Lucy. <laughs> Hope Hello, everyone Leah. is well today. I am feeling rather tired. We've been doing a lot in the astral at night, and it makes for a restless sleep for the avatar, the body. And so um, I'm going to wake up a little bit and I'm going to toss it to Leah for now. <laughs> Well, hello. <laughs> as the same, as she said, yeah, the avatar doesn't get as much rest. It's technically laying down, but when you wake up to turn over and then you wake up to turn over or you need to go to the restroom or whatever it may be, it makes for broken sleep. And I wish I could say that I slept a lot and slept really, really well more often than not, but that's not the story. Although, you know, people talk about, oh, they sleep like a baby. I don't know baby. Well, my babies, I know some people's babies sleep through the night and I don't know how they did that, but mine didn't. I mean, it was every two or three hours. It's like, no, I don't want to sleep like that baby thinks anyway. Did your kids sleep at all? That's how my son was. Um, he developed RSV when he was two months old, where when he was developing his sleep pattern. So we were in the hospital he was bad enough to be in the hospital, um, mm. getting Q one hour breathing treatments as he was developing his sleep pattern. <laughs> so when we came home, he woke up every one to two hours for uh -huh. seven months. Wow. And I was such a sleep deprived zombie. Yes. Um, and so sleep deprivation is a real thing. People say, yeah, Oh, you can run on a few hours. No, that's one of the worst things you can do. I was chronically sleep deprived majority of my life combination of working as a nurse overnight shift and then being accountable for little ones during the day. Right. So you're just living on naps basically. Right. And, um, so I really honor my sleep time now. I'm no longer being mean to myself and thinking that I'll just, you know, sleep when I die. That's the, that's the saying I'll sleep when right. I die. I'm going to live now. Huh? Yeah. But for him, we had to, well, we moved into a different place and that provided um, another room for him to be by himself instead of sharing with his sister. And then that room was cooler. He was a really hot natured baby mm. and, um, and darker. And so, uh, but he, he struggled with it to this day. He struggles with going to sleep and, and like oh, stay wow. in the sleep. So it's really something that stayed with him, but he finally did start sleeping more than, uh, three to four hours at a, at a time. And then eventually he slept all night within about a week of moving into that room. And then I slept and I remember waking up the first day thinking, what was wrong? Like, what's wrong? Oh. You know, that panic of, yes, I know yes. I've been asleep for too long, you know, kind of yes. ideal. Um, the things so, they yeah. don't tell you about motherhood. Yeah. So it, it, it was definitely not like sleeping like a baby, um, in the beginning, but everybody survived. Now what messes up our sleep is our, our mission <laughs> and <laughs> right? being multidimensional and being more attached energetically to what's happening in different dimensions than this one. Mm -hmm. So I have the more and more often I have this prevalent feeling of being detached from here. And uh, I, there's nothing I can do about it. No, I think we just have to embrace it more yeah. than anything. We're, you know, the flow versus the fight, which yeah. we talked about often. And for me, you know, I'll text you saying, my gosh, I feel like I could just go to sleep. And it's like, ping, it, there's no warning. I'm bopping, doing whatever, having a conversation or, you know, thinking, oh, let me go clean out that cabinet. I'm ready to do it today. And within minutes i'd be like planning and off i go <sighs> I said, okay never mind i'm just going to um honor the fact that i feel like i could sleep for three days even though i won't go to sleep right now yeah my brain it's like it, every almost everything just shuts off and there's a bunch of energy to process and a bunch to do and just kind of let happen whatever it is happening and then again just like a snap of the finger ding all of a sudden it, everything wakes up again and yeah, it's, a, it's something usually I about an like hour, hour and a half. I have to encourage people 
to honor that in themselves, right? Because they voice it and then they just, you know, the old American way, you just plow through. They yeah. just push on through it. <laughs> Got to get this done or you're, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your day, you know, whatever. And that's just, uh, it's a, it's a hard, it's a hard stop for me. I don't think that way anymore. I understand that time is an illusion. I don't really go by time. And mm -hmm. if I'm, I'm hungry, I eat. If I'm sleepy, I lay, I rest. I may not sleep, but I'll, you know, stop trying to push through doing what I'm doing whenever I'm really not able to focus on it. Or I meditate. It's sometimes it's a cue to just go within. Mm -hmm. And that's so far removed from what any of us are ever told you could do, given permission to do, taught to do, advised to do. And so it's really different to honor that that body cue. And because there's lots of things, it's what we're doing at night. It's the energy's coming in. The energy's giving me insomnia. I've talked about it several times. Um, sometimes that's super motivating to get stuff done and it's two o'clock in the morning, you know? So if I really got hung up on that time thing, I'd be in a quandary, but I'm like, oh, I'm up. The lights work. I'm not disturbing <laughs> anyone. Let's get some work done. And then when I'm tired, I lay down and go to sleep. So it is, of course, when you have other people dependent on you to do things at a certain time, that's that's a whole other layer of complexity. But right, um, it's also a matter of choice and what you say you're willing to do and what is good for you, probably not the same things, right? Yeah, there's finding that balance of what's expected or what others need and what you need for yourself. And that balance can look different one day to the next or morning to evening or whatever it is. Minute to minute. Yes. Yes. You know, the whole, I'm about to stand up to go. No, I'm not. Yeah. I remember mom told me years and years ago, you're talking about honoring what your body says. And she would look at me and say, you're burning the candle at both ends. You need to stop. And I didn't, I hear, I heard her. I thought, well, if I don't do this, it's not going to get done. And I was a teacher. I taught middle school. I had language arts, no less. So I had a ton of grading to do. And I was a teacher who actually taught during the day versus saying, here, sit down and do that worksheet while I do this. So, you know, the time, that's a whole other conversation. Education system, that's a lot of conversation, actually. <laughs> I'm not yeah. going there right now. But she said, you know, you're burning the candle at both ends. You, you need to stop. And yeah. uh, in my life lessons that I chose, it was okay, if you don't choose to stop, your body's going to stop you. Yeah. So I learned to say, and it took a lot, and I still have to remember, remind myself, but it will still be there. That mm -hmm. load of laundry to fold and put away is going to wait for you. That cabinet you want to clear out, it'll be there. It's okay. However, you need to honor where you are right now so that you are there. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the evolutionary process of how we, we, evolve from really being a disservice to our own body to then coming full circle and understanding that we play a role in our fatigue we play a role in our burnout we play yeah. a role in our being stretched too thin because we're people pleasing are we afraid to say no are we like you just said if it doesn't get done if i don't do it it won't get done and that's not exactly true because let me take that a step further. If you communicate with others that are working with you, it could potentially get done, but it might not get done how you would do it, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's all these different levels of control and allowance and communication and all these things that we are privy to, we are play a role in, but we do make it harder on ourselves. And uh, that's a, that's a self-reflection thing. I'm not here to tell anybody to how they're going to manage their time, except to tell you that time will run you slap into the ground if you let it. Like if yes. you are going by the clock and everything is a, an alarm and everything is scheduled, that you're setting yourself up to just be run ragged because you're, you're a slave to the clock. You're a slave to the calendar. You're a slave to something other than honoring your own system. So I, I, I used to be very apologetic when I first was working night shift, the kids were, were younger. So this was m more than 20 years ago about sleeping. Pa like I'd go to sleep somewhere around nine or 10 in the morning after working all night. Um, and then I would be up usually by two 30. So that's oh, wow. four and a half hours. 
because I had to get the kids from school, right? Again, living off of naps is not exactly living, but it's getting stuff done. I survived. Yeah, I was a single mom. I didn't have any other options. And I would fall asleep in, you know, car rider pickup line, you know, and I'm like, sorry, I worked last night, you know, and there's the judgment that people are slinging my way, you know, you're not even dressed, you know, this kind of stuff. No, I'm like, who cares? I'm covered. <laughs> Yeah. move on I've got yeah, there are bigger it, things in the world to handle it quickly I got to where because you know, the other thing too is like the phone calls come in during the day and oh, yeah. everybody else and even when they're aware that you work night shift for whatever reason they feel like you're still answering calls during the day you know and so uh I've always been a light sleeper and people would you know buzz my phone throughout the day and it disturbed me to some degree but I wasn't answering it and then, um, and I would re- repeatedly say, you know, if I'm not answering my phone at middle of the day, it's because I'm sleeping. And, uh, and they, oh yeah, I forgot. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> well, when my kids used to do that, I gave them a very powerful lesson. And the same thing happened with people that would call me. So at two o'clock in the morning, or three o'clock in the morning <laughs> when you're on, on, my, you on my night shift, when the ER would kind of empty out, I started returning phone calls. There you go. Hey, I saw you called me today. I was sleeping. So I'm a, I got some time now. What is it you want to talk about? That's awesome. And it stopped. That's it. They didn't call you much more, did they? It stopped. <laughs> During the day. And I did not feel bad about it. No. I was unapologetic about it because I felt like I had to I had to give them a little taste of their own medicine. And um, when my kids did it, I don't know if I've told you this story or not, but in my mind, it was one of my finest parenting moments, (laughs) Um, which I will share with you now. Your big crown to wear with it. Is it the mean mom crown or? (laughs) So uh, I, I worked night shift my entire career basically it was not anything new I didn't like suddenly start working night shift or whatever but when we lived in Oregon we were about uh three blocks away from school so they walked to school and walked back or whatever so that helped because there was no car rider line to fall asleep in um (laughs) but I would my bedroom is downstairs is a split level house. They would come in, hit the door running, open all the cabinets, open the refrigerator, oh, yeah. you know, doing all the things that I'm trying to sleep. And so this happened sequentially for several days. And the, the last day, this was like the, the final straw. I had put a note on the door so that they would see it as a last minute reminder. Shh, mama's sleeping you don't have to not come in you just have to be quiet don't slam doors don't slam the cabinets your snack is here you know whatever sit down do your homework I'll be up in about an hour and that's the thing it's not like I'm sleeping a whole lot more but you know how sucky it is to get robbed of the last hour of your sleep and get woken up to slamming doors and you know all that and so that on top of being chronically sleep deprived and feeling completely disrespected I decided (laughs) here we go that that week that week on Thursday um my husband at the time was going to be out of town working and I thought I'll be off I'm going to give them a little payback and so I had I had worked Wednesday night I slept Thursday during the day fine and so I was really wide awake for Thursday night because I had worked several nights before and so they went to bed at their normal time and around 11, I started doing my workout stuff. It was like super loud music on the TV. And then, uh, I was vacuuming, you know, vacuuming, cleaning, doing all the things. And then I felt, you know, how you can feel when someone's looking at you. Yes. And so I looked you know, like through the, the kitchen where their bedrooms were and I could see three heads. And I was like, <laughs> I took my earbuds out because I had my yeah. I'm like, you need something? And their famous line when I would bring it to their attention, like, hello, I'm sleeping, was, I forgot. So the oldest one says, we're trying to sleep and you're being so loud. And I was like, oh, you're sleeping? 
I forgot. And as soon as I said it, you could see three light bulbs go off above their head. Like, oh shit. (laughs) We made this bed. So they just stood there because I wasn't turning anything down. I wasn't apologetic and I wasn't stopping. So they eventually go back to their rooms. They shut their door, whatever. I turn the music up louder. I start cooking and I'm like pots and pans and all the things. Oh, oh. And the smell of what I was making. So they come out again and they're like, it is so hard to sleep. And we have tests tomorrow because tomorrow was Friday, right? Right. And I said, isn't it so stressful to know that people are depending on you to show up and do something well and you're sleep deprived? I said, imagine what it's like to be a nurse in the emergency department where people's lives are literally in your hand and you're sleep deprived because your disrespectful kids refuse to come in after school and be quiet. And they were just bawling because at this point they were really tired. Uh huh. And so they thought they were going to not go to school on Friday. Wrong. <laughs> and I was up and I said... Breakfast is ready. Come eat. It's time to go to school. And uh, they were super excited about a hot breakfast because that didn't happen every day. And I brought them to school and they were all crying. And the office was like, what's wrong? And I'm like, they had a little bit of come to Jesus last night and it's lingering this morning, but they'll be fine. (laughs) So I dropped them off and fine. They'll be fine. Yeah. And I went, picked them up about one thirty in the afternoon and they were like dragging. They could barely make it to the car. And when I picked them up, I brought them to the park and I sat them down and I gave them a snack and I gave them some juice. And I said, now let's talk. Did that feel very loving? No, I'm sure you thought horrible things of me all day, but I want you to think about how that has interpret, how that has infected my shifts. When I go through taking care of other people, all you had to do was show up for a spelling test, a math quiz, a geography test. You, you, those don't have people's lives attached to them. Right. This is serious. They never woke me up again. Never woke me up again. So I was two and a step kid. And he was all about telling his dad when he got in, can you believe what she did? did? Yeah. Yeah. And I said, of course I did it while you were out of town. Cause you would have given in. <laughs> you would have been like, no, let's not do that. That's mean. I'm like, Mm-mm. It had to be done. It had but to be you done. you also did it where there was a weekend coming. You didn't do it on a Monday. Yeah. You did yeah. it where knowing it's got one day and then you can recover and regroup and reset over the weekend. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Um, the, uh, the ramifications of me giving it back to them has paid off for a lifetime that happened. They were in seventh, I think seventh, sixth and fifth grade. Okay. So early enough, I mean, kind of late if you ask me, but early enough the right age. That, the right age. that then they could take it forward because probably the way that I raised them. I was always working at night. They were, we were kind of like, I didn't always flip my schedule. Um, they're night, they're night shift people. My, my son is a, an adult now and a night shift worker. Uh, he's actually just recently gone to days, but, oh. but he's 24 now. So his entire working up until this, this past job has been night shift. And he's like, I just like it better, you know, and I can sleep during the day because everybody's gone. It's kind of quiet where they live out in the country and whatnot. And I'm like, yeah, you see the benefits of that. If you can do it, not everybody could do it, but there's definitely a, you have to protect your sleep. And if you're, I feel like people that work night shift that, that really are still people pleasing and saying yes to everybody 24 seven, you're going to fail. You're going to fail miserably because, you know, people that work during the day, they're not always saying yes all night long. So right. neither could you, you know, you have to have downtime. You have to have a, that boundary up where you're like, no, this is me time. And just as a populace of people, we suck at that. We really don't do a good job of going, I can't do that for you. Cause I need to 
give myself some, some time to de-stress or to, to just be in nature or to just connect with my family on my own terms without all this other stuff going on. So, uh, society doesn't warm to that. It doesn't encourage it. Other cultures do yeah, more than not more than ours, but this Western society, go, 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 do, 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 make everybody happy. Yeah. Keep going, chasing the carrot. It's very different. Yeah. So when you start go, nope, that's not for me. And you step back out of it. That's a lot of people looking, going, Hey, what is she doing? Not on the hamster wheel. Weird. Or, Hey, what's she doing differently? She's calmer now. Exactly. When I finally made those changes, people would say, what are you doing different? I'm honoring the fact that I need my space. I need calm. I need peace. I'm detaching from the things that are driving me crazy, if at all possible. And it's got a benefit. I mean, obviously, if you're not jumping on crazy train every day, you're going to feel better. You are. Once you let yourself say it's okay and don't, mm-hmm. and you know, go through that guilt, but don't be guilt, feel guilty for this. You know, you're, you're putting yourself first. You're choosing to be good to yourself. Therefore, you know, pouring into your bucket, as they say, your self-care bucket so that you can then pour out for others, but you've got to have yours filled first. Yeah. And as women and in the society, we're not encouraged to do that at all. We're encouraged to help everybody else. Yeah. But you've talked about this often in other videos, but we're not encouraged to say, yeah, me first. No. So when you yeah, start that's... putting that boundary going and realizing, you know, I am going circles doing for so-and-so. Yeah. Pause, go back. And when you say, actually, no, I'm going to do such and such. Like, oh, look at you strangely. They get, they deal with it. Yeah. Or not. It's their issue. It's the over, overwhelming need for more compassion, right? We have mm-hmm. to be more compassionate for ourselves, for other beings, you know, and uh, it's something that's come up a lot, probably in the last mm-hmm. 48 hours or so um, because of events in the world. There's, there's, yes. there's a lot of people struggling to be compassionate because things didn't go their way. Right. And, um, there's a lot of talk about, I can't believe they want us to unite, unite with those people. And to that, I say, good thing, father source creator and mother, mother Sophia doesn't subscribe to that bullshit. Cause we'd all be in trouble right? We are none of us perfect, right? And we all live, we soul contract to either have a negative polarity life or a positive polarity life. And in every life, there are villains. And those people said, yes, I'll, I'll show up for you in your soul contract and I'll be the villain in your life to teach you things. And they follow through to show up for you you should give them love, forgiveness, and compassion, gratitude for that lesson that they showed up for, because I gar- I guarantee you source and mother Sophia will, because it's yes. not easy. It's not easy well, to be the villain in someone's story. Well, it's not it's easy to often time, it. <laughs> often they, they run the other way because they don't want to be that. And that's the kind thing to do, but you're also reneging on your promise that you made before you you arrive you know so you have to understand it in in a deeper level of complexity that if we are to live in the embodiment of christ of source to have the the spirit within us then we should be a loving forgiving and compassionate person across the board especially to those that cause us harm Because a suffering soul exacts more suffering. And who needs love and compassion more than a suffering soul? And when you're in the constant, oh, me, 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 me mode. And what can you do for me? Or, oh, that's bad. When everything's black and white, black and white, black and white. And you don't stop and say, wait, let me shift perspective here to what you just said. Because what you said is not typical. It's not the way you're raised. I think we're born that way. Yeah. You know, when you see little kids, you see the love that they have for others and their willingness to help and to do, and they just want to be everything. Once in a while, there's a child who isn't like that. 
But most of them, if you just watch, like, wow, what you can learn from little children versus trying to direct them into what you think is right. And obviously, yeah. don't let the kid go smack, 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 just for fun. But yeah. there is a and layer there. The other thing, too, is that they could teach if the adults would let them. They could teach us how to live in the now because they're not sitting yes. there worried about the future. I mean, they're worried about what's their snack going to be. <laughs> when that's they're hungry. A, they don't that's, care about it. That's, no, hungry. Yeah, that, that's about it. And, and, uh, they, they live in the now they, so if it's bad, it's bad right now. And that could be great five seconds from now. And they mm -hmm. don't even remember that it's done. It's let go. They're moved on to, Ooh, I love this shiny little <laughs> doll. It's so pretty, <laughs> you know, and it's just that easy. It doesn't have to be that difficult. You know, it doesn't have to be all these layers of guilt and shame and blame. And you did this and I did, you know, because we all make mistakes. None of us are perfect and we all deserve to be forgiven. And we all deserve to have a compassionate hands extended out to us to say, I know it's tough right now. I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to help you. So if you expect that, then I expect you to be that because it's, it's going to be a real hard sell for someone to be that for you. And you've never extended your hand to anyone. Mm -hmm. That's why I say, if you want things to change, you've got to be willing to change. And that's my problem with so much, um, conceited vitriol because they want all the good things, but they're not willing right. to change. They're, right. they're not willing to stop throwing knives at people. And so uh, that has to change. And that is where I'm focusing my love waves from now on. Because love is the key, right? Yeah, it totally is. Love is the way I see it. I like that. So love if you cool. really want our, I really do want our, our, populace of people to unite in our strengths and build up our weaknesses and come together for the greater good of humanity this is not like a a catchphrase or a hashtag for me it's what I really truly believe in order to do that we've all got to be willing to change we've all got to be willing to um make better choices once you know better you do better right so that's kind of been in my craw the last few days can you tell <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> I typed what you said. I'm I'm saving it in my little notes app here. I have met people all throughout my life that have notes in their phones called Nicolisms because I say things that are just oh, funny. unique. They well, you put things together well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes it's, it's, it's harsh, but it's still true. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say you might not wrap it all in a pretty bow, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's still true it's, it doesn't make it, it untrue true. it is true yeah love is the key compassion opens the door I, that i think if nothing else if people just take that and work with it feel that work through that and allow themselves to say okay how can i show this more to myself and to those around me because when we do so much you know we talk about the love waves and how there are ripples and they don't have right. to be huge you can just if you smile at the stranger who's looking like they're having the worst day and you give them a warm, compassionate smile, and then often, not always, but often, they'll smile back, you just help that person. You, you made a difference. And yeah. where's that ripple? You don't know what that person will now take with it, but you're providing that ripple effect. It doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be on the television. It doesn't have to be broadcast anywhere. And you certainly don't need accolades for it if you're doing it from your heart. Yeah. when you're doing it from your heart yeah but when you just remember all the little things it doesn't matter to a huge group maybe not right now but did it matter to that person yes does it matter to that family yes yeah you know right now i'm crocheting you know i love to crochet and i make head hugs they're not hats they're head hugs and scarves um but i'm doing a bunch of them right now to donate to a local nursing home which is it's one that is on the government money if you will and so they have nothing extra no money for extras and even the basics aren't fully being met and so the residents there appreciate basically anything mm -hmm. um, it's one of those that it's worth it to give to them and they their smiles are amazing when you see them mm -hmm. um, 
But anyway, I'm working on those because there's a group of folks getting together to do this. So I'm creating a lot of hat hugs. So it's, it's, it's not huge, but for that person or those 100 people, it means something. And from there, what will that provide? Yeah. And, and that's the thing. I think if you don't know where to begin, if you're uncomfortable because you haven't healed enough to extend that to someone outside of you, that's okay. But start with you start loving yourself enough that you give yourself permission to heal, that you give yourself permission to show yourself compassion. What does that look like? Not pushing through. It says no whenever you feel like you just want to lay in bed and curl up with a good book, do that. You know, don't, don't keep, you know, keep ignoring your own health, your own um, healing, your own divinity, because you feel compelled to help everyone else because you're really doing yourself a disservice. So if you don't know where to begin, you have to begin within, you have to begin with yourself. That's the, the easiest and most important place to start, because if you start trying to do for others, which is something you haven't really done for yourself, where, where are you giving this from? You know, how, how long before you burn out because you haven't healed yourself. So your cup is, is going to be empty because it was empty when you started. And, um, and so that again, is just a, a cultural thing. It's a cultural vibe. So whenever you stand up for yourself and you get the weird looks from the mom squad or whatever it is, you know, instead of biting back at them, give them the secret. Love is the key and compassion opens the door you know, extend compassion to them. And you're like, look, real talk. I just couldn't keep doing everything everybody was asking me to do until I took care of myself. And now that I know how important taking care of myself is, I have a whole nother level of calm and peace. And I don't feel bad whenever I can't do for others because I know I have to do for myself. You know, that right there would be a huge permission for other people to even start entertaining the idea of doing yes. better for themselves because that's the thing like they don't they feel like they got to keep up with the joneses and they got to do what everybody else is doing or else i'll be talked about and obviously low vibrational stuff you know which does not freaking matter it doesn't it matter doesn't help. It doesn't do no no yeah. keeping up with the joneses the Jones joneses are not happy and they're broke <laughs> yeah. yeah they don't have fun no they just well, have they do, stuff then Yes. No, they just have stuff because a lot of people that have a lot of stuff, they're doing things all the time. They're spending money and they've got all the, the toys, but inside they're miserable, right? Yes. They don't they have like on the outside. They don't have joy because joy comes from within. Joy can't be bought. You can go do things, but it's not going to bring you joy unless you have healed your heart and you're able to actually have joy. And when you've healed your heart, you don't have to have things to have fun. Right. <laughs> and mic drop <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's funny because you go on this you know when you, when you embark on the spiritual journey and you dive in head first you don't know where it's going to take you you don't know where it's going to take you and that's the beauty of it because the universe is going to pull you in to the deepest darkest shadows that you have been running from your whole life so that you can realize that Fear is an illusion. Pain will not kill you. And healing is infinite. You never really stop healing. It's a journey. Because we heal ourselves. We help heal the planet. We help heal the collective. And healing is good, but it takes work. There really is no magic wand involved. And so you have to stay committed to yourself. So even if it sounds great on the first day, you're going to be questioning yourself on the 30th day. And six months down the road, you're not even going to recognize who you used to be. That's how stark the contrast is once you really start living into the energy of who you are. When you stop paying attention to everything outside of you and you realize that none of that shit matters because you could line everything up to look differently and inside you still feel empty. You still feel a mess. Right. You still feel like you're not loved or, or appreciated or feel less than because you haven't given it to yourself. 
you know, and, and that is a huge hurdle that we put in front of ourselves. Yeshua talks about that all the time that we, we literally construct like with nails and hammer our, our really big hurdles and stick them right in front of us. And we're like, <laughs> it looks good down there, but I don't think I can get there from here until you remove the hurdle that you put in front of you. No, you can't get there. It's all a matter of what you want to do. So it's not easy. It's shadow work and spiritual journey and, and the awakening. It is like stepping into the ring for a boxing match multiple times a day. And he hadn't trained for it recently either. No. And you're not a boxer. No, no. You <laughs> forgot your mouth card, everything. <laughs> you just said, wait, shut up. Okay. What are we going to do first? Yeah. You're going to run for your life first. And then you're going to realize this isn't working. I can just stand up and face my fear. And then the fear just crumbles in front of you. And you're like, oh, that's all that that was. That's it. It's been Fantastic. chasing me around my whole life. So you stand up taller and you're like, yeah, I got this. Yeah. So I issue a challenge to anyone watching this. And that is to be more compassionate to yourself first and to those in your vortex next. So if you're one that likes to respond if someone's ugly to you, you're ugly back. Or <laughs> if someone makes you feel a certain way, you make them feel worse. I ask you to take a pause on that because it's just layers of shadow work that needs to be forgiven and healed. And uh, try to be loving and compassionate to yourself first. If you're not looking for love and compassion and kindness outside of you because you've given it to yourself and you're fully healed, your whole world changes because you're not seeking something that doesn't exist within you. And again, joy can't be bought. Bliss is not something that you can purchase off of the, the internet. You have to find it within you and it's going to look different. It's going to look different for, for even members inside of the family. What Leah does for fun for a respite looks completely different than what her spouse does for fun. Then, you know, what, feels his soul but they both have the ability to do that individually and then come back together as fully expressed happy blissful joyful people honoring that like everybody doesn't have to do what the next person is doing that's okay too that's okay yes. give yourself permission but that is a challenge to like tap into another level of love and compassion for yourself so that you can be more loving and compassionate to people around you. And that will shift all of the energy for everyone involved. Beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. That that came from elsewhere because I certainly yes. wasn't feeling it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have one little thing to add to that. And I think we can just have it maybe wrapped up with a bow. Kind of. Um, when you're talking about getting started with self-compassion, self-care, self-love. For those who go, gosh, where do I even begin? I'm I'm so used to helping everybody else. I don't know. I don't even know what to do for myself. I encourage you to say, okay, what would you do for your friend? If your friend said, hey, I need help, how would you reach out to that person? How would you assist your neighbor, whoever it is? If it's like, I know I could totally go do their load of laundry or I could clean that sink for them or man, I think we could really use fresh baked dinner. Whatever it is, where you would put your energy and effort for that person, circle that around and put it on for you. Okay, if you would gladly go to your neighbor's house and wash their sink full of dishes for them, do you have a sink full of dishes to be washed? Give yourself that gift. Give mm -hmm. yourself that grace and wash your dishes and then take a break. Mm -hmm. If you would say, I could really, I would love to go and spend that hour with this person. Okay, if it's for yourself, for your friend, please do. But would you also give yourself that kindness and that grace to spend the hour with yourself in quiet time to spend it communing with mother and father god with nature however that looks for you mm -hmm. where how would you help so and so okay how can i apply that to myself and begin there and then it will get easier the more you do it yeah there's a huge need for that level of reflection too because even when I hear back from people all the time, like I took 30 minutes, I don't normally take, I took 30 minutes and I was, I was uncomfortable five minutes in, right? Mm -hmm. Cause that's so used to being, you know, it's different. Yeah. Tied to the devices or other people 
you know, the phone ringing at work or the desk or the, the, whatever the emails, whatever it happens to be. So whenever you step out of that the first time, yeah, it's going to feel weird. There's going to be some like uncomfortable silence. That's okay. You have to get used to adjusting to not being overstimulated, right? And saying no and turning the phone off, leaving it in the car, take a walk in the park where all you hear are the birds singing, the wind through the trees, you know, that kind of thing that brings you back down. That's called grounding, you know, where you've been living like this false sense of reality for a long time. And then you, you're stepping out of that and you're walking right into nature where everything is real. Um, the energy is real. It's not, it can't be fake. If mother nature's having a bad day, you can freaking tell. <laughs> she's, she's not cleaning fake. up. She's taking care of business today. <laughs> yeah. You know, every time I go for a walk and the winds are really, really brisk, I always welcome the winds to blow in change. Wind Cause that's change. how I yeah. foresee it. That's how I see the winds. It brings us messages. It brings us change that needs to happen. And we may rain. not, yeah, we may not like it. We may not like it in the moment, but the end result is it needed to happen and it needed to happen for the greater good. And so I give thanks for that. Do you give thanks for the weather? I don't know. Maybe that's I where do. you start. I always give thanks for the weather. If, even when it's raining, yeah. when it's, when it's lightning, when it's thunder, when it's, when it's not looking pretty, I always give thanks for the weather because a weather event can bring an entire country to its knees. We've seen that time and time again. And it's not all natural. I know that. But it's devastating. It can be devastating. But it also, there's always a rainbow that comes after a storm. There's always this beauty that shines that you did not notice before the storm, that you notice after the storm. So there's all sorts of blessings that come different ways. And to, to let go of the control we think we have to micromanage our blessings is a gift that you can give yourself because then they come to you in ways that you do not expect that you have not planned. And then you're no, like, don't plan it. Let them do it. It's yeah. always prettier when they do it. Yeah. They have so much more ability to bless you when you're not telling them how to bless you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So let that go. Yeah. Just receive it all. And say yeah. thank you. Yeah. I'll we'll feel thankful. Yeah. Now, Green Terra gave us a couple of services on violetlotusenergy.com. Yeah. I wanted to mention them. She popped in the last two nights and I was trying to go to sleep. You know, remember, <laughs> remember, Lucy, we have these services. We can help people find and create, co-create their heaven on earth and, and understand how to leave the matrix. So if that's something you're struggling with, if this entire conversation has resonated with you, because these are about the, the real life struggles of exiting what we're taught to do and gravitating toward what actually feels best in our body and our being and our energy, then I, I recommend those because the people that have had them have said immediately they felt such a sense of calm and peace and love and nurturing and also motivated to change which prior to the sessions, they were the type of like, I don't understand how I'm supposed to change. I don't understand how I'm supposed to do this. Like, I just don't even know where to begin. Like that frustration level was like up here and then they come out of it and they're nice and calm. Ooh. And yeah, now is it like that always? No, because you go through different things. You have to maintain it, but it gives you a, a, a good window to experience that feeling. If you don't know what it feels like, you may be less motivated to try to obtain it. I think it gives you a good window of this is what your life could look like. This is what your life could feel like. If you get better at enforcing your healthy boundaries, if you get better at tuning into your own body, to your own energy, if you get better at being love, forgiveness, and compassion and gratitude for yourself and others. So it's just a, it's a door. It's a door that opens that you can have the choice to walk through or not, but it's definitely available to you. There's, there's a lot of things that we can do to help that, that step off of the, the negative time loop a little bit easier. Yep. Absolutely. Just reach out. Happy to answer and questions. Leah has a service that she does as well 
uh, that helps you kind of leave the matrix. And you want to talk about that real quick? Mother Sophia? Yeah. So <laughs> this is cool. You know, anybody been to counseling before? You know, you rehash things and rehash things and wonder, wonder, wonder. Well, if you would like to connect directly to Mother Sophia, one-on-one -on -one counseling session, I can facilitate that. And it's amazing. It is the most warm feeling, like mama's talking to me, big warm hug, but she also doesn't hold back. It's ding, 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 done. Here it is, straight and simple. And it's like less than 30 minutes typically. Yeah. And she tends to run it often. It's like 15 or 20 minutes and it just helps you focus in. So breaking free from the matrix, um, counseling one-on-one -on -one sessions with mother Sophia can help you yeah. with that too. Yeah. And those are facilitated via telegram where, telegram uh, chat. Mm -hmm. yeah, in the chat, you just have a, a private chat with yes. Leah. And it's and, just via text. It's not yeah. even voice. So it's as private as we can be that way. Yeah. So for you. If you get the message and you want to scream and holler, so be it. Yeah. <laughs> most most people, the first time, they're just very emotional with Mother Sophia's energy and what she brings up. And uh, it's like your mom putting her arm around you, like, let's have a chat. Yes. And it's one of those, let's have a, a real chat. Yeah. Let's have a real chat. Yeah. But real in a good way. It's, yeah. it's, it's a good so. Yeah, it's nothing, I wouldn't really even compare it to Western counseling because it's True. Meant, I just think it's of people meant think to of... be a wake-up call in a loving, nurturing way, but like, okay, stop the insanity. This is what needs to take place. This is what we're seeing. Or they, this is not your issue, and this is someone else's issue, because we right. do that a lot. We take on a lot of other people's issues, and then we're like, I don't understand what to do. Right. Or, okay, I'm kind of stuck here. What's going on? Okay. Let's get to the bottom of it. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, great. Okay. See you next, yeah. you know, I'll chat with you next week. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we have def lots of different things. Obviously the first thing you have to do is have a QET session in yes. order to do that because we won't engage with uh, an energy body full of negative distortions, entities, implants, all that kind of stuff. Cause we don't want that stuff. And we don't want you to have it either. So that's the first step is to be clear so you can have clear messaging and clear communication with your higher self. But it's so beneficial because prior to experiencing like this phase of my life, I was the person that, that you know, people would say, we need to have, you just need to have faith. You just need to have faith and everything's going to be all right. And I was such a bitch. I was so snarky. I'd be like, you know what? I've never seen God come down and write out a check for my mortgage. I have to go my ass to work. And I have to keep saying yes to shifts because I have to pay my bills. That was who I was. And I was that way for a very long time. And I had to LFG all of that in myself because number one, I didn't have any faith at that point that I was living it. And if I, if I did, if I really truly was real with myself, I was taking all those shifts to make more money because I was miserable with myself. I didn't want to spend time with myself. The more time I had thinking and processing the things that I should have been doing my shadow work, I was escaping that by working. And I was Getting putting busy. it out to people like I have to work because I have bills to pay, you know, that, that armor. But a lot of us do that. I'm not the only person that's ever done that. But it brought me to this point. So if you're having struggles with any of that stuff, definitely check us out violetlowestenergy.com okay anything else you want to chat about today i'm good i finished my tea i know i'm about done with my coffee so it must be time for us to go yes but it's been fun yeah never know what we'll talk about it just um, do, do, do. <laughs> you never know what we're going to talk about right before it we just, push record we said we have no idea what we're talking about <laughs> we don't know we don't plan this okay no, nope. okay. yeah, my chair's getting a little uncomfy. So on that note, <laughs> it's time to go. Until next time. We'll see you next time on Wednesdays. What's up Wednesdays? With Leah and Lucy. Who knows? <laughs> like seven days for me feels like a month. Mm -hmm. The last time we recorded, it feels like a really long time ago. And I don't even know what we talked about. That was so long no, ago. <laughs> it's so far removed. It's so yesterday's news. <laughs> You guys have a great day and I'll Bye. see you again next time. <laughs> Bye.